Well, one thing that, well, I think that really helped me on this, I was actually talking to, uh, I was having a conversation with David Bentley Hart about that. I had asked him about the wrath of God and he had pointed out to me something I had noticed before that quite often when Paul talks about the wrath of God, uh, he actually, our English translations will typically render the phrase the wrath of God. But in the Greek, that what it actually is saying, it's, it just is the wrath. What Paul talks about is the wrath. And most of the time, it's in the context of Paul talking about the law. And so Paul is talking about the law as sort of like, this is, this is what brought death, right? And yet that it's, Jesus, you know, that Jesus brought us life. Uh, you know, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, but you know, the law brought sin and death. And so um, I think a lot of times, when it comes in the Old Testament context, this idea of wrath is, um, I think it's the way people have tried to make sense of when things happen. I, I mean, just in my, in my view, I think a lot of times it's um, kind of in some ways maybe a primitive way of reacting to things, like trying to make sense of things, right? So let's say pre, uh, sort of a pre-Christian understanding of God, there was a lot of this assumption that God was a wrathful being. Uh, you know, why did our crops die? Why is there a famine? Why did my child die? Why was there an earthquake? Uh, why did my house burn down? Well, God probably must have been angry with something we did. We must have uh, angered the God somehow. Um, it must have been something I did wrong, right? So I think a lot of times the wrath of God, pre I would say a pre-Christian idea of the wrath of God is sort of like us projecting onto God what we think God is like. And, um, and I actually think that one of the primary things that Jesus does is to come and correct this misunderstanding of that sort of wrathful God. Um, it's a pretty radical statement to me in the Gospel of John, like chapter one of the Gospel of John, where uh, John says that no man has ever seen God at any time except for the Son, and that the Son came to make the Father known to us. Now, why would, why would we need anyone to come and reveal the Father to us if we already had, you know, Moses and the prophets and all that? Well, I think it's because we didn't have an accurate picture of who the Father was. I think that's one of the major things Jesus is doing. He's saying, if you want to know what the Father is like, look at me. And when we look at Jesus, we have the best picture we could ever have of who God is. And what we see is a God who doesn't have any wrath. We see a God who is loving, who forgives instantly, right? Uh, I love that, like, Jesus is constantly forgiving people. By the way, always pre-cross, uh, you know, before the crucifixion, Jesus is constantly forgiving people. They don't even ask him for forgiveness. He just, you know, your sins are forgiven. What, what would you like me to do? And then they'll ask to be healed or something. So um, I think in Jesus, we have a correction of what I think is a misunderstanding of the wrath of God and the character and the nature of God. Um, and, uh, and I think that's a, that was something we needed. We needed Jesus to come and give us a more accurate picture of what God was like. Uh, like the prodigal son is one of the most phenomenal uh, parables that Jesus tells because it's a parable that the Jewish listeners would have been listening to and would have ex been expecting that when that son came home, he was going to experience this wrath, you know, the, the righteous wrath of a father, you know, who's like, hey, I told you so. You didn't listen to me. You suffered this way. And there's none of that, right? In the, in the prodigal son story, there's only love and mercy and celebration. And in fact, in that story, the only person who wants sort of wrath or judgment or you know punishment to come uh, to that to the son is the brother. <laughs> so it's not the father. The father is absolutely welcoming and forgiving and accepting. And again, I think this is a corrective that Jesus brings that was a much needed corrective. And uh, so yeah, when it comes to the wrath of God, I think that Jesus comes to show us that, like Paul says in Second Corinthians, God was in Christ not counting our sins against us, but reconciling the world to himself. That it's not wrath, but reconciliation. That's the primary thing uh, that we see through Christ, of who the Father is.